just like all of my videos, it's always a challenge to figure out how to present the information in the best way possible to help you, the students. What I decided to do for the male reproductive system is to trace the development and the expulsion of sperm. And so we're going to take a look at the organs as they relate and in the order of sperm production to sperm release. So we're going to have to begin by looking at where it all starts from. Okay, first of all, the creation of sperm is known as spermatogenesis. We're going to talk about the scrotum in more detail, but we have to talk really quickly about what it is right now because we're going to look at, at closer into the structures that the scrotum contains that begins this whole process of spermatogenesis. So the scrotum is considered external genitalia. It is a pouch of skin, muscles, and fibrous connective tissue. It contains the testes, which is what we're going to focus on right here. And again, we're going to talk more about the scrotum later. So we have the scrotum, which is that pouch of skin, muscle, and connective tissue. Within the scrotum are the testes. The testes are going to produce sperm as well as testosterone. They are paired glands that both have an exocrine and an endocrine function. As far as shape, they're oval and slightly flattened. They're around 4 centimeters long and 2.5 centimeters wide. The left testy is usually suspended lower than the right. This is to prevent compression when the males sit, uh, bring their legs together. You don't want two testes at the same level because they'll squish against each other. So one hanging lower than the other allows them to kind of go next to each other without crushing each other. They are wrapped individually in the tunica albigina. The anterior and lateral surfaces are covered by the tunica vaginalis. Inside the testes, we find that they're divided into kind of like a grapefruit. If you've ever seen a grapefruit or an orange, when you open up the grapefruit, when you open up the orange, you'll notice that the orange and the grapefruit are segmented. They have this membrane in between the pulp. Well, that's kind of what the testes are going on inside. They are segmented. They are divided off into segments. Each segmented portion is known as a lobule. Each lobule will contain one to three seminiferous tubules. The spermatic ducts is where we find sperm production. So sperm is created and moved through a series of ducts out of the scrotum. Note that the sperm do not swim until they're actually released from the male. So their entire time inside the male, they're being moved by other forces. They're not moving themselves. So a quick summary of the duct system. We're going to cover this again in more detail, but let's talk about the duct system in general. We have the seminiferous tubules, the ready testes, the efferent ductules, the duct of the epididymis, and the ductus vas deferens. We're only looking at, right now, the duct system found in the scrotum. So we're limiting our view right now to the scrotum only as far as the duct system. We'll continue on looking at the other ducts and the other parts that join in throughout the body later. But let's right now focus only on the structures within the scrotum. Sperm is created within the seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules are coiled and located within each of the lobules. So within the testes, we have the segmented areas, the lobules, and the sperm is created, it's developed for the very first time within the seminiferous tubules within those testes. The seminiferous tubules lead to a network known as the retitestes. The sperm partially matures within the retitestes and are moved along by fluids found on the posterior side of the testes. So we had the beginning of the sperm. We have some maturation. Just because sperm are created doesn't mean that they're mature. They're going to go through a maturation process as they moved through the ducts. It, from the red testes, the sperm will enter what we call the efferent ductules. From the efferent ductules, the sperm is moved to the ducts of the epididymis. The epididymis is the site of sperm maturation and storage. That sounds like a good test question. On your test, you might ask, where are sperm produced and where are sperm matured? Well, sperm are matured and stored in the epididymis. The epididymis will also absorb fluid created by the testes, and sperm there can remain viable, meaning remain alive, able to cause pregnancy, 
for 40 to 60 days. From the epididymis, sperm are then moved to the ductus vas deferens. The vas deferens is a muscular tube that takes the sperm out of the scrotum. On my business Facebook page, I asked my students, kind of a little old joke, what's the difference between a penis and a garden hose? And of course, there's a vas vas deferens. Ba -dum -ba okay, moving on. In the next video, we're gonna take a look in more detail at the scrotum.